The documentary resulted in him cutting out ties with his father whom he saw for the last time 20 years ago. Football had helped Piqué cope with the earlier breakup of his parents' marriage but even when his bond had ended, he found there was no escape from all of the drama surrounding him. As the long-haired kid with the cherubic face who had had his legs in short for a ton million and mingled with the likes of Ian Wright and George Best at awards ceremonies, he was instantly recognized wherever he played. There was nowhere to hide and the pressure to perform became too much to handle. I'd turn up for training and the shit's eyes widened, wondering what's he doing here, they were a bit strange with me, he says. But he just wanted to blend in with them, he just wanted to get back to playing football. Didn't want to be known as that sort of flat character people thought he was. After I'd stopped talking to Muda then the plan was to get back into playing football and hopefully find a club. He ended up going to QPR and then Crystal Palace. At QPR, he was thinking, this is my chance to get back on track but he was in the dressing room before games feeling so nervous and the tension had gone through the roof because the expectation was massive. He was going through so much other stuff at home. Mentally, there was so much going on, and he struggled because he couldn't really focus or concentrate or be the same he was. He was even nervous in training, I'd always been so laid back on the pitch, he used to forget about a lot of things that were going on. He used to lose myself a little bit when he was playing football. But he found when he went back that as soon as he got onto the pitch, he felt the tension and the pressure he was hiding. He used to be saying, he want the ball. But when he went back he just didn't want to be known. The attitude had changed, Piqué finally cracked while representing Palace in a youth game against Tottenham tipped over the edge by a couple of seemingly innocuous errors. The ball came to me a few times and my touch was off, he remembers, then, it came to me again and it hopped over my foot. People watching might not have thought much of it but for me, it leva up into a big deal. I'd had a few poor touches and he felt under pressure, so, he just started walking off the pitch, he never even said he was injured. He walked straight off. The coach was looking at me and he was just like, yeah, let me go, he walked straight into the changing room and just sat there wondering what was going on. It was tough, he was only about femton or sexton and, honestly, he still feel it now, that was the last game he played for Palace. He stopped playing altogether for a few months, Piqué was eventually persuaded into joining Stevenage by a friend but not because he wanted to continue playing football, solely because he felt he had no other options. He thought to myself, do I really want to put myself through this anymore, but he didn't know what else to do, he admits. He sat in my bedroom thinking, if I'm not going to be a footballer, what am I going to do, he had no plans, no nothing. It wasn't like he could do this or that, I'd missed quite a bit of school, so, he went to Stevenage. But even when he was there, it was no longer in my mind, he wanted to be a football player that had gone. Gone, he wasn't thinking, if he do well here, he was an empty shell, he wasn't in the frame of mind to become a football player. He went there and did me beat, but he enjoyed the social side of it more than playing. He had a great laugh with the boys on the team, but mentally, he wasn't there, so, Piqué quit. Several top clubs offered him the chance to kickstart his career but while the talent was still there, the desire was not. At you start on, he was done with football for five years, he didn't kick a ball or even think about the game, he reveals. He didn't know what to do with myself, so he just went out with me mates, like a normal kid at that age, I suppose. But he got myself in a few positions he shouldn't have, he was taking a lot of bad decisions, he just wanted to feel normal. He didn't want to be known as that long-haired kid from Ajax anymore. He just wanted to blend in with the boys, he was in a bad way, he was struggling mentally and didn't know what to do, he was suicidal. Thankfully, the birth of his daughter Freya changed everything, inspiring Piqué to secure a taxi driver license so that he could earn a steady wage to provide for his new family. When he held on to my little girl in the hospital, he just thought. I've got to pull my finger out here, get on it and do something properly, he explains. So, that's when he decided I'm going to do the knowledge, the exam to become a taxi driver, get my own job, get some security. Since then, I've been making these little steps, put myself in good spirits and I'm doing all right now. I've got my kids, got married and my house. I'm used to enjoying normal life, however, Piqué still wanted to dress his pet so that he could start building an even brighter future for himself, his wife Rosie, daughter Freya and recent arrival Bo. Therefore, returning to Amsterdam was necessary, but nonetheless difficult. 
when he was asked at one point to do some flicks and tricks for the camera, it brought back some bad memories. He was quite blunt with the crew, he admits, he said no, as I've got to make sure I do the right thing do me. I'm in control now and they told them that it wasn't for me. So, it's been a gradual process. It feels weird being here, I'm not going to leave because everyone knows me and says to me, you're the long-haired kid who played for Ajax, it feels surreal but I'm quite proud of myself in a certain way because I know I'm doing this for the right reasons. It's also brought